Hi everybody, this is going to be a tutorial uh, about multiple alleles. We did talk about multiple alleles in another lecture capture to come, the dominant series. But in this lecture capture, or this little tutorial, we're going to talk about when there's more than one allele for a given locus, right, more than two, so at least three, within a group. Now, any individual, each individual, can only have two alleles. Why is that? Because they only have two chromosomes right, of each type. Two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, two number fours. One came from the sperm that made you, one came from the egg that made you. Okay, so we can only, each individual can only have two alleles. But a population can have lots more than that. A really nice example is blood type. Okay, so blood type, there are actually three alleles out there. Each one of us can only have two, but there are three out in our gene pool. So what does this mean, right? A gene itself can have more than two alleles, but an individual can't, right? Two only. If you're a boy and it's X-linked, you only have one, right? Remember that? X-linked males, only one allele. Okay, and that's just to remember that. Okay, so for blood type, how many are there? There's three, and since they're the same allele, we want to use the same letter in the alphabet. How do we do that? Well, we have to have some other way to denote what they look like, right? Because if we use two different letters, it appears to be two different genes. Remember the dihybrid, right? Big T, little t, big R, little r. We don't want to do that. So what do we do? We use capital I superscript A, sorry that's like that, capital I superscript B, and little i. So what do we know about <clears throat> the when we make something capital or lowercase? We know lowercase is always recessive, and little i is recessive to both IA and IB, which means these are both dominant and so what are they to each other? If neither is dominant over either, they're co-dominant. Okay. So these three alleles, here they are. There's four different blood group phenotypes that can come from those alleles. Each one has a different dominance relationship. Okay. So if we look at that, and we look at what the whole story is, Right? It's all about the sugars that are, are held on the surface of our red blood cells. So if you are homozygous A or heterozygous A, your blood type is A. Blood type is B in the same way. If you have both alleles, it's codominant. So you have AB, both sugars. If you are homozygous recessive, your type O, that's essentially no sugar. Okay, so this one here has both sugars A and B, only B, only A. So if you're type A, you do not know what your genotype is. You could be homozygous or heterozygous. Same with B. If you're AB, you do know, because you have to be AB. Big, big, <laughs> big I, superscript A, big I, superscript B, and... If you're type O, you know your genotype as well. So here's just a little schematic of <clears throat> your blood type, right? Your genotypes, your antigen types. If you want to look at uh, tra uh, transplant rejection or blood um, donation rejection, you can check this out. This is very fun, but I'm not going to ask you um, questions like this about rejection and antibodies and that sort of thing in genetics. What I will ask you about is, are, sorry, different questions about using blood type. So for this one, I want you to do a Punnett square. I want you to circle your answer. I want you to screenshot, and I want you to upload to iPad assignment number six, homework ABO, or ABO homework number six, and some 
order like that. <clears throat> so we should be able to do these Punnett squares just like we always have before. And then we can go over this in class. So please do this, write out your work, take a screenshot, and upload. And that would be great. Thanks much.